Your date of birth holds all the secrets to your soul. Huh? You give us your date of birth, we'll tell you the secrets to love, the secrets to lust, and who the best person for you just might be. I have the answers. Check out Secrets of Birthdays at secretsofbirthdays.com. Welcome to Soulmark Guided Hangouts, and today we have practical wizardry with our wonderful wizard, Christopher Wateki. <laughs> and also, I've got GA9. Here's GA9. Welcome, GA9. <laughs> How are you today, Christopher? I'm doing groovy, man. I'm feeling good. Today, the sun is in Leo, and uh, we're feeling the love vibration. And for me, I, I get as Leo cooks up, I feel better. How are you, Agent One? <laughs> oh, I'm emotional. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I know. Good thing I have that. Jupiter gets emotional because woo-wee. <laughs> nice plug. Too bad I can't get my own cancer mother to watch it. I live with her right now. <laughs> and it's free. And it's free. So uh, thanks for the plug. I appreciate it. And this is uh, this is Practical Wizardry. My name is Christopher Wateki. I'm a wizard, and I am a practical one at that. And I think we're all uh, we're all magical wizards and creative people for a living uh, and on Earth here. But I'm going to tell you the practical uh, parts of being magical. And what we're talking about is the practical magic of love. And love is really the essence of all power and magic on Earth. It makes everything go round. If you don't know, um, people may say good ideas do, but it's that you love a good idea. People may say great bodies do, but it's that you love the great body. Okay, <laughs> no matter what it comes down to, even if you uh, basically if you live your life for money, it's because you love money that you were living your life for. It. So love really is what makes the world go round. And it's funny that we don't spend more time focusing on love. And I think. Uh, we're going to talk about why that is. It's because of a bunch of little brats inside. We all have a little brat. Um, so where do we start? Well, you know, I want to talk about uh, the path to love. Last week we talked about um, where love is, the center of the universe. The sun is the center. We're supposed to use that model, what is above is below. And I brought up the concept of stepping into the heart and gave you some ideas for stepping into your heart. And the core of it was that uh, you have to be your own church and you have to fan your own fire, Right. So let's talk about that. Has everyone been playing this week? Anyone have any fun? Raise your fingers if you did. No? Interactivity? Yes? A couple people did. There's some smiles, even though it was emotional, says GA1. Emotional fun. This week, the sun <laughs> is exploring the first chapter of Leo. And the sun basically is I love. It's the center of our heart. It's the center of the solar system. What is above is below. We're supposed to put our heart in the center. And so astrologers, because the heart is the center of the universe, the astrologers look at the sun to see where the heart of everything is going on right now, right? So the sun right now is in the sector of sky called Leo. And you need to understand that Leo is just a section of the sky, just like a calendar has a section for March, right? So once upon a time in ancient Babylonia, astrologers looked up, or people who became astrologers, and they noticed that every time those stars were in the sky, his wife was a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> And he couldn't help but notice that every time that happened, she was cranky, okay? And so they started writing this down, okay? Because they just noticed that it just was uncanny, you know? So this is how astrology evolved. It evolved from us paying attention to our own emotions and watching ourselves on Earth and then looking at the stars as the only calendar we had that kept repeating itself. Thousands of years later, now we're starting to get it on a, on a quantum level, too, that it seems that the, God gave us the solar system to understand how we work inside ourselves. And we're focusing right now with the Sun and Leo on our heart. Now, in the first chapter of the Sun and Leo, one thing that always happens, and one thing that happens in the first chapter of any magical part of the year, is that you have to get rid of the stuff that's in the way. That's what we have to do. You have to purge. Always the first cycle is purging stuff, purging stuff that hurts your heart. So has anyone had a hurt heart this week? Whoa! <laughs> uh, it's a good time to answer. GA1, uh, is that software that we're using? <laughs> <laughs> it is software. I thought Boy, so. I know that the Geminis have been reporting in, including myself, and yeah, my heart did hurt, so I've really been trying to feed it some extra ice cream. But uh, So that's another reason why you guys... You can come in and join us, and you can share in the love. You can come to soulgarden.me, and you can be part of our studio audience. 
we look forward to having you here so that you can ask your questions. And it's been brought to you by soulmark.me, and it is where the most loving practitioners on earth are. And right now I'm in love with our Christopher's newest horoscopes that just came out. Thank you so much, Christopher. Whoa, it was just in time, just on that Star of David. Thank you so much. <laughs> I know. I was racing like hell to get uh, that in in time and uh, to get the scopes up in time. It was tough. It was actually really tough. Uh, but I made it, and that's kind of where we are. And this actually leads to my question before the gong, which was, uh, did anyone have a broken heart this week? Did anyone have their heart hurt in our audience? Yeah. You can just raise your fingers. No. Everyone else had a great week, huh? I had well, this first, yeah, I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it's not supposed to, like, you know, when we hurt our heart, this is what we need to monitor, and this is what I'm going to start to move into today, and this is our little game I'm bringing today is um, I want to get us into paying attention, becoming aware. To step into your magic, you must become aware of the flares of the heart, when the heart flares up and when the heart doesn't flare, just like the sun flares. And we're focusing on increasing our strength as stars or increasing our strength in our magic or increasing our self-love. And the very first chapter that we've gone through this week is the universe giving you a tour of areas that need to go out of your life, things that need to get out of your life because they are hurting your heart, all right? It is, sometimes it's, uh, it's people, sometimes it's your own processing about people or your processing about the world, but there's usually something in the way. But to understand what's in the way of a heart, we have to actually be in touch with our heart. So that's why today, we're going to open up this uh, uh, Today Show with one of my classic games uh, in Lightcast Bootcamp that I do, which is called The Love Tester. Ooh. <laughs> we're going to do The Love Tester. This everyone at home can play the love tester too. I love how all the kids got excited. <laughs> now, um, as you know from playing the love tester, uh, you know it can go. There, there can be all sorts of things that happen from zero to hot stuff. There's uncontrollable, which I've never even hit. But if I was next to, a, I'm always wondered as a little boy if I was next to a girl or something, what would happen if I hit uncontrollable? <laughs> so the goal here is to basically, in this game, you're going to tell me. Uh, you're basically listening to your heart. So put your left hand on your on your heart. You have to put your left hand on your heart. Your left hand is your spirit hand. Your right hand is your logic hand. So when you want a pure spiritual reading, you always want to touch. You always want to do stuff with your left. And you put on your heart chakra right in the center. And then what you want to do is you want to breathe into your hand and breathe out of your hand. So you start breathing in and out of your heart chakra. This makes you omni aware of what your heart uh, is uh, feeling. And really, when we're breathing, we're actually breathing. Air is, uh, you know, air is our body's fuel, and uh, love is our heart's fuel. So when we breathe, we should also be practicing breathing in love and breathing out love, and breathing in love and breathing out love. That's the healthy way to go. So this love tester is a game. You're going to see an image, and you basically want to feel if your heart says if your heart likes it, that's like a yay. If your heart doesn't like it, there's like a uh, okay. Does everyone understand? Yes. All right, so here's the first thing. We're going to start simple. Apple. <laughs> I want a green so, one. Yeah. Okay, there you go. So that's a good, this is a good exercise. So my heart was like, yeah, my heart wanted, my heart was like the apple. My heart says yes to the apple, believe it or not. It's like, yeah. But I actually want a green one too. My heart had a little edit there at the end. Same thing. Okay. <laughs> but see, now so we're listening I, to our heart. We're starting cool. to speak to our heart too. This is you speaking to your heart because your heart has full language. It said green. You notice that? And your mind didn't say green. Your heart told your mind what it wanted. All right. Santa Claus. Eh, that doesn't really do much for me, Santa Claus. How about you guys? Kind of scary. <laughs> kind of scary. I chose kind of a romantic image of Santa since we're all adults probably. Okay. How about this? Baby. Oh, ah, my heart. My heart lit up. I love her. I love that baby. Yeah, me. Oh. Hi. I like the fuzz at the top. <laughs> His little smirk is just the cutest thing I've ever seen. Now, they say we're programmed to automatically open our heart for babies, right? <laughs> so, you know, let's uh, stop there for just one second. We're, if we're programmed to open our heart for babies and you're feeling bad, why don't you just go hang out with the baby? Right? Why don't you just go hang out with your baby? Right? These are just resources that uh, are in our magic right away all the time. Back to baby. <laughs> okay, so that's baby. Ah, uh, how about this one? Yes. <laughs> Is your heart open? <laughs> My heart's open. My heart's a little guarded. <laughs> <laughs> My heart's a little guarded, but it is open, and he's a grouch. 
But this just goes to show you that the heart doesn't have prejudices. How about this one? <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. <Dick> the grouch. <laughs> Yeah. Show him kinda... again. Look at his eyes. <laughs> yeah, he just looks like he's just up to evil. But but like, forget what our brain knows. Does your heart open? Mine doesn't. So why do we vote for him if your heart doesn't open for somebody? How about this balloons? I'm terrified of them. I'm terrified. Uh oh, we got a balloon tragedy in the house. We got I, a damaged always... inner child. No, it's the weirdest thing. I've always had this like extreme phobia of hot air balloons. Okay, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling like they're pretty, but I, I, I don't really like them, no. Okay, so go hold that thought. What about these hot air balloons? <laughs> <laughs> and I love her! I love her too! And I'm also pointing out how balloons change. And how with kids, the idea of what a balloon is changes too. You know, I actually like these balloons a lot. And these balloons. <laughs> My child likes all balloons. How about fireworks? Ooh. I think, does your heart light up with pretty things? Yes? Yes. Yes. How about funny things? Nope. <laughs> I like, my heart lights up with Homer. I don't know why. He, I think because every man is a Homer somewhere. I don't know. I love Homer. He's so sweet and stupid. How about this guy? I love him. I love him. He yeah. makes me sad, though, that he's gone. Everyone's sad. Gone. Does, does sadness come when you, when you yeah, see him? Yeah, it does for me. So your heart brings up sadness and joy? Yeah, like, I, I, like, I just am sad that his life was cut short because I do really right. like him. But that's your smartest. Be quiet, smartest. I want to know about the heart. The heart that's is... That's what my heart says. Your my heart, heart loves him. Okay, and your heart also feels a little pain. That's why I'm just yeah. trying to get just to the heart, not to be a smart ass myself. <laughs> now my smart ass is taking off. And these are for our baby boomer women, just so you know. How about this guy? See, now you may not have watched him. You guys are all kids. Dawn, chime in here. I love him. Okay. That <laughs> yes, Johnny. Yes. Yeah, Johnny's a sweetheart. I mean, if you knew him, he's super funny. I saw a documentary on him lately, but, you know, recently. Here he is again. There is a little bit more of his inner child and his best friend. Now, I don't know. This is a little segue, but did you know that Johnny Carson was the drinker and Ed McMahon wasn't? Did you know that Ed McMahon was the one that car carried Johnny Carson out of the bar every night, even though Johnny made fun of him for having a drinking problem? Interesting stuff, huh? How about this guy? Yay, Kermit! I love Kermit. Um... And I found out recently that Kermit was has technically has my birthday. Or actually, I have Kermit's. He was first really? aired on my birthday, yeah. Okay, and this is for the guys, which there's none in the audience, but there might be one watching. Womp womp, Miss Kardashian, if oh. you don't know. It's not just a bikini, it's Kim Kardashian. <laughs> the horse's ass. The horse's bubble butt. <laughs> which has been conveniently cropped. But, uh... <laughs> But whether or not does your heart light up? See, now here's the thing. My heart doesn't light up for this woman. I have other things lighting. <laughs> okay? But not my heart. And I'm just wondering how men really are. And that's the difference between does what lights up. Does your heart light up? Because ideally both should. How about this? Aww. Yeah. I don't want that. That heart totally lights up with that stupid thing, doesn't it? <laughs> Cute little fingers. That's really what I call giving giving someone a finger. <laughs> uh huh. How about this? Oh. I like it. Does your heart light up? A little I'm bit. If it, okay. what, yeah, I'm a Scorpio rising. What's in? It looks like there's something creepy in its mouth, but I like snakes. It's a mamba. Oh yeah, I like it. See now that's see that's very. Does anyone heart get scared with this? Peace fingers. Right. No. No. Mine doesn't get scared, but some little kids do. I mean, the whole point is listen to your heart and what your heart is telling you. How about this lady? I love her. I love Meryl Streep, too. She's always laughing and smiling. She's a brilliant role model. She's super, super sweet. She's also a cancer, which are really great at making you feel loved, even though you might not be. <laughs> no, just kidding, Mom. All right. And <laughs> How about this woman? Do you love her? I don't know. Like, I really like her. 
My heart, I don't know if my heart would say, I, I do love her like I love her, but I know women are like, I love Oprah. Love her. All right, how about this guy? Is that the new pope? I like the new pope. I like the new pope, too. He's cool. I like him. Don't love him yet, but I'm starting to love him. Mm -hmm. He's a Sag, by the way. Very lovable. Mm -hmm. Very uh, did, tolerant, too. Yeah, very tolerant. And did you did you see him when he went down to Brazil? It's like, he's like, he's he's bigger than Bill Clinton down there with kissing babies. It's like... <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? You know every mother's like, oh, I'm never going to wash my head again. You know what I mean? I bet that's what happened. Okay, back to our love tester. Oh! oh totally lit up. I, oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Isn't that funny? It's so easy. So easy coded. Anything and you know, with fuzz. Yeah. What's that? Anything with fuzz. Anything with fuzz. Well, not anything. <laughs> you have an example? Can you get to see? Yes, this is a fuzzy guy right here. This oh, is uh, muchas personas. But anyways, he's got a sweet. He's also a cancer, and I think he gets to us. And then I thought we'd look at uh, a little bit of modern twilight love. Does that really, uh, does this light up ladies' hearts? No? It doesn't. It's sure selling tickets like it does. Yeah. <laughs> what about this guy? <laughs> this might be what's really drawing women to the theater. <laughs> Whoa, I heard a yeah, which was much more than the heart I, chakra. Well, he, I mean, he's got some nice abs, but... <laughs> right, so we're looking at, you know, uh, yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> well, that was wonderful. I loved having my heart chakra light up. Thank you, Christopher. What are we <laughs> on to next? <laughs> we're on to next is, uh, uh, we're moving on to what to do with all this. So... What I'm demonstrating is walking people through their hearts, walking them into their magic, stepping into your magic. What that little slideshow was trying to show you was how your heart lights up or doesn't hide up, light up, how sometimes your mind interferes with the heart in a given moment. And, you know, this kind of Warshak test with yourself is the way you start to notice your own magic. The truth of the matter is, is that magic is based on interacting with the universe, and the interaction is love. So the conversation that God has with people is always through the heart and always with love. There's never a word to it. So some of the more pure examples of that slide you just saw was like, uh, for instance, you know, your heart light up huge with the puppy, your heart light lit up huge with the babies. Those are easy. Why are those easy? Because there's no other, none of the rest of you is objecting, right? So if we were on the Jesus Christ path or we are on the holy, on the holy uh, uh, you know, magical path, that path would be that we want our heart to light up 100% to get to the magic. We want our heart to always light up 100%. And why, don't, why doesn't our heart light up all these other 100% with these other issues? Again, because the rest of us is interfering. So when you are trying to light up about your wife, or you're trying to light up about your children, or you're trying to light up about something that should be like a puppy, should be something that's just so obvious, what's the issue there? The rest of you is getting in the way of it. The rest of you is interfering with the sun. The sun's in the center, but one of those damn planets is getting in the way. Now, one of the biggest ones that get in the way is emotions, right? Because emotion is the ocean, and it's what adds all the, all the uh, power to our, and passion and steam to our passionate love. So we want emotion, but when want, emotion goes the wrong way, which is what GA1 was talking about in her week and what everyone was talking about uh, last, last month when Jupiter first entered Cancer, when emotion is, is not managed properly, it can put out your fire or it can make your fire better. So emotion is one we really pay attention to. But today we're going to talk about love and we're going to talk about fanning the fire. And so what I'm going to talk to next is the, the disciplines I basically said that we had to happen is self-worship. Remember, you got to self-worship yourself to get the fire going, which is going to church, the church of the heart. That's what I call it. got to go to the church of the heart where you worship your own heart. Self-gratitude. By the way, self-gratitude is an attitude you take all day. You know, to the point where, like, when I was coming out here, I was like, and thank you, Christopher, for being on time. You're welcome. Okay? <laughs> now, I look certifiably insane, but I'm happy for the show. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm in my heart, and I'm joyful. And, you know, despite all the energies and weather that's come out today, and there's been a lot, a lot of people going through their emotion, they're really caught in that ocean, um, you know, staying, keeping the fire flamed and not letting the planets get me down uh, is part of that day as a magician and as a, as a wizard. So we got to have self-gratitude all the time. And then there's self-promotion. 
And basically these three, self-worship, self-gratitude, self-promotion, these are basically the three stages of how love conscious is built. So I'm going to give you a quick another screen share and teach you one little thing. We'll start with this guy, love consciousness. Is that it? There he goes. All right, so this is what I call Master Shui. I teach this. Uh, but the way love conscious is divided is in what we call decans. Everything has three levels of consciousness. You have to be aware of all three levels to be magical. And what we're working on is everything from zero to ten, all right? Which is the question of, is there love present or not? Right? That's what we're asking. Do I love it or not? And that little love tester was a very simple yes or no answer. Do we have a signal here, Captain, or do we not have a signal here? People live their entire lifetimes trying to answer from zero to ten degrees. Do we have a signal here, yes or no? And those ten little words that go in there, those are all the different ways that love has to plug into your life in order to be magical. You have to love and protect yourself. You have to just love love for love's sake. You have to love the way you feel. You have to love comprehension and what you comprehend. You've got to love where you belong. You've got to love what you think. You've got to love what you give and receive. You've got to love what you're sensing. You've got to love what you decide and have love in your decisions. And you've got to put love into all your actions. And that's a lot. That's a huge bite of love. And any kind of time of day, we're kind of going from these still, our love is going up and down the scales. And your heart is basically going up and down the scales. And the scales are your heart checking in with the 12 states of awareness or the 11 states of awareness. Or you can look at the other way. They're checking in with the heart, right? So what we're going to work on is amping our love vibration, which is the uh, which is the fourth chakra, which is the green chakra, which is the chakra where everything goes through. Love is the center, and uh, that is <clears throat> and that green color is very helpful, by the way, uh, when you want to amp up love in your life. Go outside. What? One of the, I believe one of the way, reasons we feel so amazing in the middle of a forest is the green. Mm. And if you notice, green is the color that absorbs God's sunlight. Right? Wow. All right, so it's like, that's a shocker. Green is the color that absorbs God's light. Oh, my God. Sometimes <laughs> the, themes, the themes are so kindergarten and obvious in some of this magic, they have to be true. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about the three states, 0, 10, and 20 degrees... We're talking about self-worship, 0 to 10. From 10 to 20, it's self-gratitude. And mastery is self-promotion. So don't promote yourself until you're a master. <laughs> there's, a, there's a scale of things. And at least till you feel mastery. And the truth is, is that we go up and down these little parts of our heart all the time. And the truth is, too, is our heart also scales when you look at those pictures. You know, the apple fits in one of those three categories. Everything fits in one of those three categories. In these three categories, though, a healthy heart and a healthy wizard has got to do all three. You've got to be serving all three parts of your love consciousness. The first part where you're just loving yourself, right, and focusing on you, that you feel love and that you give love to every part of your being. And as we move into this next week here, we're moving into the part of Chapter 2. So the sun just spent the first 10 days uh, going through, and basically every day we're alive, the sun is like, do we hear love from protection, yes or no? Do we hear love from... Love itself. Do we feel love? Do we believe in love? Do we innovate love? Do we think about love? And that's all astrology is. It just takes you every, every month through every degree of every part of life. And you only get one day with every degree every year. That's it. So we just cycle over and over and over and over and over and over through all the degrees. We are today nine degrees. That means it's time to act on what we've learned this week. That means this weekend it's time to step forward and apply love to the ego. And then me today with ego and love being mixed together, the universe is going, is your ego on board with your heart? So how many people feel their ego on board with their heart? Is your ego ready to go sell what you love or go chase what you love? Fingers up if it's a yes. Yay, yay, yay. Some not. Okay. Well, here's the thing. You technically uh, want to take the steps in the next 24 hours to step away from what you don't love. Step away from what you don't love. If your heart's not in it, okay, if it's Dick Cheney See kind of later. feeling. See you later. Yeah. If, no, we'll just use our pictures. See you if, never. It's Dick, if it's Dick Cheney, <laughs> goodbye, Dick. Right? That's probably going to be the situation no matter Don't step on my jokes. Don't step on my jokes. Notice the setup when you hear it. Notice the setup when you hear it. So, uh, no, but at the end of the day, uh, we want to take this step and move forward. Then the next day, tomorrow, we're going to love and hold space. And the next day, on Sunday, is when you begin to draw in love. 
and we move into next week, which is Chapter 2, and that's what I want to leave everybody with this class is what to do with Chapter 2. Woo! That was good. Was that good for me? It was good for you. That was good. Hello my friends, great news. My newest video, Jupiter Gets Emotional, is available for immediate download at soulmart.me. I dive deep into the Jupiter emotional issue in cancer and cover six months in 20 minute videos. So come check it out at soulmart.me. Thank you girls, you make me feel special. <laughs> um, so what we wanna do this week, and this is what everyone needs to do, okay? This is your soul assignment. If you're really serious about changing your life, then this is the time to do it because we're in natural synchronicity with the sun in Leo. So the sun has returned home, love, okay? And that means that you can re-articulate your life today and change it. I don't care that you were going to stop drinking until now or whatever, whatever New Year's. New Year's resolutions uh, are kind of bullshit in a way. I mean, the sun's in Capricorn, so that is when we're taking control of our life. But if you know Tiger Woods and other Capricorns, it doesn't mean you're going to get it done. <laughs> okay? <laughs> like, yeah, you're going to get something done. <laughs> something. A He's a swinger. He's a swinger. All right, so... What we need to do is build the gospel. So what I call this is the church of the heart. And I believe we're supposed to worship our heart. I believe that's the whole reason we bow our heads. You're looking at your heart. It's your heart you're talking to. It's not anything out here. It's like, hey, because this is the walkie-talkie to God universe, I believe. I believe that God universe only speaks love. I don't believe God universe uses words. I believe words are slow and retarded like a squeak from an ant to us. Like, you hear that ant squeaking? <laughs> that's okay. actually brilliant. That is, but like, that is brilliant, Christopher. Thank you so much. I love but, that. But here's the thing. As a human, if the ant did this, we'd be like, <laughs> Right? Like, so I think that, like, when you, like, the ant waves, I swear to God. <laughs> I think that, like, uh, with God Universe, it's the same thing. It's like when you go, when you shine in your heart, like, ta-da! I think that that vibration, which you hear, like, you see a little baby come out or something and go, ta-da! Like every, every, you can see the parents go down like dominoes. Oh, 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 oh. And it's like totally like uniform, like the whole house is brought down to the baby being cute, right? So we know the power of love is true. And the problem is, is that when we aren't getting what we want in life, it's usually because the power of our love is being interfered with the rest of us. Some of us, the rest of us is getting in the way of that. Also, when we're trying to manifest love, stuff's getting in the way, uh, you know, in the rest of us. So we want to stay in a pure signal of love. And to stay in a pure signal of love, like the love you felt in the doggy slide or the love you felt in Dolly Parton's breasts, whatever, <laughs> okay, that love that you felt, that's the love you want to feel walking out the door every day like a marching band. And to pull that off, you need to create a gospel, the gospel of you. That's what I call it. And every Leo knows this gospel. They're born with it. In fact, you know, I, I look at Leo babies. I can always tell, like, in a house. You know, like, in the grocery store, Leo baby be like, do, do, do. They're on, they're on a show. They're like, <laughs> I'm like, your, your kid's a Leo. She's like, oh. <laughs> The mom's all, like, all worn out, like, huh. Oh. Yeah, it's Leo. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. All right. So they think they're royalty. Uh huh. Good luck. So, what does gospel made of? Gospel is made up of music. Gospel is made up of dancing, and gospel is made up of singing. And you know, this is why I think uh, uh, the Southern Baptists have it. Okay. They have it as far as the rituals concern, and the whole get up and feel it, and get in the motion, and get in the heart. That is so true. If you take Lycas Boot Camp, which is a class I'm teaching uh, at the start of, you know, back to school, September in Virgo, I'm teaching Lycas Boot Camp for the beginners, and I'm teaching, uh, uh, excuse me, practical wizardry for the for the ones seeking to do some master spells. Uh, but what I teach in this uh, and teach to everyone is you have to uh, stand up in your heart each day and kickstart the heart. That's what we call it, kickstarting the heart. And this is the overall ritual that leads to a solid day. Now this ritual is important because what we teach are the 12 steps of manifestation or 12 steps of light casting in this class and each of these steps kind of has to be attuned to be able to be magical and the most important step of course is I love because that's the center of your heart. Now when we manifest one of the steps that we teach along these steps is uh, action. 
that you must put a spell into action. You literally have to do uh, a rain dance to get rain. You can't just sit there and meditate on a rain. You're going to have to actually get up and dance. There's this part of uh, reality for some reason that it must be part of the matrix where action is gets it started. And I think this is why cults who are very lazy, usually rich men, <laughs> these weird secret cults and all this shit, they have, you know, like they don't want to lift a finger. They want to just go hang out, have the wine, and do the cold stuff. But at still the end of the day, they got to get dressed and do the blood and all that stuff. Why? <laughs> because that's built in the matrix. You still got to do it. All right. So uh, building the gospel is based on putting into action right away your heart's intention. And the best way to do that, all the village chiefs will tell you, is dance. All right. <laughs> Dance. Dance is the best way. We danced around the fire. We danced with our chick. You know what I mean? We find out the hospital bill. We start dancing. <laughs> Every, <laughs> dancing is actually a way of bringing the energy through the whole body and activating the body. You can also run on a treadmill. The truth is, is like what I teach in my class uh, is that I, I do my spells on a treadmill. That's where I do my spell making. That's where I do my light casting. Um, because it's uh, because the action is and so it is and so it is with every step and so it is. So I put it. I don't really want to wait. I just go right to action. I don't do a lot of light casting until I got all twelve steps ready to go. And usually when I'm ready to light cast, it's like blah, 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 blah. okay, we'll see that <laughs> let's do it. We're done. Okay, well, that's a good one. Whew, yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's good. So what you need to do first is you need music. Music is step one. All right. So in the in, you know we need self worship, and our self worship needs. Uh, our ritual and music is the basis. So you have to choose music that fills your heart with love and makes your inner child come alive. It doesn't matter what the music is. It only matters that you're feeling love, feeling total love for life. Turn the gay volume as high as you can, okay? And you've got to get that drum going. Everybody knows what it feels like when you feel good in a song. Now, when you start to put on the song or when you start to go towards your self-love ritual, if the inner brat comes up and starts to cause the trouble, which is like, I don't feel like it. No, not that. Chris is stupid. This is all stupid. <laughs> right? So, like, that is the inner brat. That is the hurt part of the heart. That's the part of you where you have to, even though part of you feels like the brat, right, another part of you does it. Just like if you stub your toe, one toe fucking hurts, and the rest of you is pissed about it, right? We have dual consciousness in us. So when you're feeling bratty, you the work is to go, come on, you stupid wizard, and pull yourself over into the other part of yourself, which goes, come on, it'll be fun. Right? So pull the brat up, make yourself do it. In ten, you know, in two seconds of this, the brat's like, okay, okay. <laughs> right? The brat usually comes along because what does it want? It wants joy. So most people don't get past the brat's part right there. Most people cannot get past their brat. Most people take their brat on other people. A lot of people do, not most. But a lot of brats are running the show. We know that. And the brat is the, heart part of the, the hurt part of the heart. So when you start your ritual, make the brat, make the brat do it. Convince the brat. Inspire the brat. Promise the brat a cookie. <laughs> You know, like when I was trying to get the brat to quit things like drinking and stuff like that, I would have to promise to stuff like, I'll tell you what, stop drinking for a week and then you can drink all you want. <laughs> I had to like trick the brat. The brat's like, oh, okay, okay, you're so stupid. It was like, okay, we can do a week, you're stupid, we're going to go back to drinking. And then my higher self is like three days into sobriety, my higher self's like, ooh, I don't, I don't think we need booze anymore. And my friend's like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> I got to brat. That's how I work. So you can trick the brat. It's okay. I mean, it's between you and your brat. <laughs> your brat might be smaller, so it might fuck with you in your sleep. You wake up with bruises. So, um, so you need the music. So music is vibration. Now, did you know that angels really love music? Um, music is kind of like the only physical thing that's totally enjoyable for the angels because it's, 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 uh, it's the closest to the way their frequencies work. Everything past, like, Beethoven gives them a headache. <laughs> I don't know. I doubt that's true. I think they actually love all music, even, like, hard rock. But music actually is a vibrational thing. They say Beethoven was, you know, the super genius. I think he was from Sirius. That's another story. All right? But I believe he was, is a spiritual genius, and he could download some of those angelic frequencies into using the instruments of the orchestra. 
I think the Beatles downloaded angelic frequencies and they put it into their stuff. In fact, you know, I was thinking about playing Beatles music, but of course, it's like as soon as I thought that, a lawyer knocked at my door. I was like, oh, it's like just thinking about it. <laughs> Using a Beatles song without copyright. <laughs> I've got like crazy spells of their lawyer tricks, but um, them and Disney. But the truth is, is like you play a Beatles song for two seconds, and it's like you're like right in, what would they know? Like you're like in your, you're like, in your account, like it's like four notes, and you're in your inner child. You know, like, ah, like amazing magic. So you need to. So frequency, you can. You know, I chant Buddhism because the frequency of the chant, like, puts me into this spell. And the spell is for me to relax and let go and set my heart free. That's the spell I put myself into, to set my heart free. From what? The other effing planets that keep trying to screw with that shininess. <laughs> the other parts of myself that are trying to deal with reality. I'm telling them to shut up, right? Reminding me of what I am, a spirit, a star. That's who I am. So you have to have some star time. Put on the music. Then you need to dance to the music, and you need to create ritual. Now, for me, ritual usually turns into a really bad performance of, like, a townsperson in a community play. Because <laughs> I'm always like... <laughs> That's the way I feel like... And if you watch me, you'd be like, oh, my God. Like, people would not watch my show. Well, they're watching it now, but I'm putting it on, on my spellmaking. But, like, for me in my church, it is all, like, my church. And so I'm dancing the way I want to dance, and I'm not usually completely dressed. And usually there's <laughs> incense, and usually um, there is something yummy to drink. Because, like, I like – and I think if you look at, like, the Catholic ritual, it's how magic works. The reason why you have the smell and the wine and all this stuff is you want to unite the five senses of reality into the sixth sense of non-reality. And so you want to unite all the senses. By, you unite them with a the harmonic blend. You have the, the incense that pulls on a certain frequency. You have visuals that pull on frequencies of color. These frequencies create a, a spell. The spell is a concoction of frequencies. A concoction of frequencies is an invitation for people to go along with your frequencies. If it feels good, they'll want to frequent it, yeah. right? And that's how it kind of works. That's what falling the spells is. Falling the spells is falling into artistry of frequency. So what we want to do is get into our own frequency, find our own signature, and you do that through your self-worship. You do that through your own gospel. You do that through music, dance, and the last is singing. Anybody here sing? Come on, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. Okay, okay. I didn't say sing well. <laughs> That's right. Did I say sing well? I said sing. No, I always tune sing up my Sing a while song. I'm tuning up my body. Do, 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 do. You know what? I was just thinking about Melody, one of our uh, instructors. I was watching her, her, watching her show, and she helps you get into your voice. And you guys really should go check out Melody because none of you just now would sing at all. So you all suck <laughs> at, at gospel. All right? Um, and she helps you get into your singing voice, and she's uh, on Tuesdays. But uh, the funny thing about it is, is like, you know, I, sh watching her show, I was thinking about what it felt like when we were kids and you got to go to music class. Do you remember that? Yes. Going to music class? Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, I now feel, now watching Melody, I now feel bad for my music teacher when I was a kid. You know what I mean? Because that teacher is trying to get everyone to sing, and every kid in there doesn't want to, right? Every kid doesn't want to, except that little bitch that, that always sings. That yeah, one on the mom. end, who tries to take every part. <laughs> that was me, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing. The girls get really catty in chorus, remember? They'll be like, she's a little bitch. No, she isn't. And I'll be like, what's going on back there in the back <laughs> rows? Because I was a short guy. But the point is, is that, you know, I bring up childhood memories to bring you in your heart, by the way. It's a little wizard's trick. You want to bring people in their heart, bring up a childhood memory. So bring up a childhood memory, bring you in your heart. Remember when you used to sing? Singing is important. Why is singing important? Because what you're basically doing when you do a celebration of joy and light casting and magic making is you are uniting your five senses. You, you're uniting them with the 12 states of awareness. You're uniting them with a ritual. You're uniting them in motion. You're putting that motion into a frequency. You're putting that frequency into a frequency that goes along with the song. You see what you're doing? You're basically stirring reality when you do this. Now, you get 1,000 people to stir reality, shift happens. You get one person, shift happens. Shift happens all the time. 
Now, after you're stirring reality and dancing and singing with reality, when you sing, this is the point when you lead reality. Come on to my spell. That's what every singer does. Come on down, let me tell you a story to my spell. You know what I mean? Like, come on. You know what I mean? I was like, <laughs> I feel like, where's he going? I think to kill us. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Whoa, that was a perfect ending. So your sole assignment is to create your gospel this week, and I want everyone, if anyone comes back on my show, because you guys are starting to be regular love groupies, I'm loving it. Um, I want to hear about what your ritual was. I want to hear about your gospel. I want to hear about your song. And for those of you who comment, thank you for commenting on all the shows. I love it. I'm reading all of them and uh, sharing with you, uh, sharing with us, like your your favorite spellmakers. You tell us your uh, your gospel, what you do, and don't you know? And if you have a pseudonym or a fake name on YouTube, then then go ahead and give us all the dirty details. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you, Christopher. That was an amazing show. You guys can come and join us on Friday night with Carolyn Mayberry and Woo! Mike Eby with Love Bites at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We've got a good wanna, one for you. If you want to be part of Practical Wizardry with Christopher Witecki, it is Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We posted at soulgarden.me. And I just want to tell everybody thank you so much. And this has been brought to you by soulmart.me. And be sure to get your Jupiter Gets Emotional. I know that it has totally helped me. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Live, love, be. Live, love.